Hello everyone and welcome to the How Good Is. Today we're gonna talk about mom. And you should definitely call your mom because she probably haven't, hasn't heard from you in a while and you, she's lonely. Speaking about my record though, we have Tsubaki right here and she's a support type who, I need to mention this immediately because it just immediately struck out for me, has good stats. We have a support type that has really good stats, especially in this attack department. Like if you have a lot of defense, you probably don't have a lot of attack or whatever. This is a support type with really good defense and also really good attack. And still has really good HP too. How does a support type have this good of a stat lineup? That's actually kind of absurd. So we can already know that her stats are kind of absurd. What about her disc to excel is to charge this. That's all right for building uh, excel. And a lot of people have said like, oh, but she doesn't build excel as fast as some other like excel gorillas. True, that's true. Um, but keep in mind, on one hand, she's support type, so she gets the full um, bonus for Excel discs, which Magia types, okay, I think Magia and support type both get the 120%. Um, but more importantly, if you're playing a full Magia team, you'll probably have so many Excel discs on that team, and maybe even someone or even two people with Excel draw, that it's okay if one of those Excel discs is a charge disc now. Right, and I mean, even with charge disc, you can build some uh, Excel. Uh, even if it's not a full Excel combo, you can do something like an ACA combo is still a really good for building at, uh, Excel, at least on one character. So even though it's not quite the best, like it would be better if she had three Excel discs, it's still good. It's still really good. Like it's the second best disc lineup you can have on a Magia focused character, and it's still really good. So just keep that in mind because, like I said, I know a lot, lot of people have been like, oh, she's not Excel, so she's not going to build Magia as fast. No, she still builds it really fast, especially if you have a full Magia team. And you would play her on a full Magia team. Why? And we'll see in a second. Moving on, she does have a personal um, who has been posted to me by the lovely Seeing Love. Thank you very much for uh, doing that. Um, we have Flame Attribute Attack Up to all allies. It's probably going to be something like 25% either 20 or 25%, uh, just going by the Roman numeral 4 up here. Uh, I just assume it's that. By the way, uh, important overview to keep in mind for the rest of this video. These are all the things that can give Flame a good attack up. It's going to become important in a bit. Um, I would say it's around 20 or 25%, so it only works on a team with Flame Attribute characters, or if you don't have a team with Flame Attribute characters, it at least works like at least on Tsubaki herself. But we're worrying about other characters and she's a support and like I said, yeah, I have to kind of have a fire team for this to do anything special. And it's 25% for one turn. That's pretty good actually. If you have a fire team, like you need to play a fire team, but if you do, this is a really good memorial. You definitely will definitely take this memorial with you if you're playing on a fire team. And it could be the only memorial you have with you. Like if she's one slot, still take the memorial probably for this for your team. And play her on a fire team. But moving on though, we take a look at her connect. Her connect is the uh, Ara Ara connect that gives attack up, anti-debuff and evade. And I mentioned this already in my uh, news video where I talked about this character just very quickly as an overview. And as I mentioned, the attack up is nice, but apart from the attack up, both the anti-debuff and the chance to evade, both of that completely depends on what the enemy does on their turn. If the enemy doesn't use a debuff specifically on the character that you've connected to, the anti-debuff part does nothing. Does absolutely nothing. And keep in mind, this is not a debuff remove. This doesn't remove debuffs. This is a, de anti a debuff shield where if uh, that lasts for one turn and if during that turn someone tries to put a debuff on that character, then that debuff doesn't get put on them. It shields them from that debuff for just that one turn. So it's very specific for this anti-debuff part to do anything. And secondly, you also have the evade part. And the evade part, just the very same if that character doesn't get attacked. I mentioned every single time if the character doesn't get attacked, if they have this evade connect, it does nothing. So it's, it's highly dependent on what the enemy does on their turn for how effective this connect actually turns out to be. So I would say that her connect is definitely her weak point. It's the one thing about her that I think is kind of weak. But as we're going to see, everything else she has, especially her doppel, is so goddamn broken that it's okay, I guess, if her connect 
isn't the best. But her connect to keep the mind is definitely the weak part of her. Of course, yeah, there might be situations where you know an enemy uses a lot of debuffs and you can put anti-debuff on someone and then they don't get hit by that debuff and you're going to be like, way amazing. Or they get attacked and then they evade and you think to yourself, yay, there's like 20 other characters that can also do this. But yeah, I guess. It's, it's not terrible because at least it still has the attack up on it, which is useful all the time. But it could have been way better. Moving on, though, we have the Magia, which I'm not going to talk about right now because I need to talk about SE first because the Magia has a lot of... T I'm going to spend like 10 minutes talking about just about the Magia and the Doppel, so let's do the Spirit Enhancement first. It's okay. So the first few notes are not that important, although it is important to know that she has at least one Excel MP, uh, MP gain up, which is good. Uh, we know some heal characters, some heal types don't have even a single one of those notes, so yeah, it's good that there is one. More importantly though, there's a damage cut here. Nice, she's already having a lot of defense. Damage cut on top of that, good. Anti-Magia Seal, yeah, she's all about that Magia and Doppel as we're gonna see in a bit. So, Anti-Magia Seal, great. Skill Quicken, 15%. She gets a full 15% chance of Skill Quicken, also amazing. You wanna have that on a support, really good stuff. You have the Burn on Attack, which lasts for two turns, and this is the important bit. First off, Burn is a level two status ailment, so enemies take increased damage for weak element. You want to have that on the enemy. Secondly, it lasts for two turns, meaning, even though it's random when the enemy actually gets this, since it lasts for two turns, you don't need to react on the same turn where it gets applied, which you can't even do, uh, like react to it be because it just happens. Uh, you can just attack the enemy now, and if it does happen, then on the next turn, then you can start planning now that you know the enemy is burning. So that is really good, right? And the other part is the anti-debuff. You, uh, or not you, but Tsubaki ignores the first debuff that is cast on her in any battle. That is some decent stuff, there's some good stuff. So yeah, this is some great stuff right here. Nothing that's super duper amazing, like MP Star would have probably knocked it out of the park, but, or, or just MP Restore, like imagine if she gets MP every turn, that would have knocked it way far off the park. But we want to keep her at least somewhat balanced, only a little bit balanced. Just kidding, she's overpowered. But what else do we have? What well, we have for uh, active, defense down to one target and remove debuffs. It's not that great, to be honest, like, defense down is only 25% to one target for one turn. That's a very low number on one enemy for one turn, not that great. Uh, and secondly, remove debuffs to all allies, also probably won't use this too often. How often does your team even get afflicted with uh, debuffs? And secondly, how often do those debuffs even last longer than one turn, where it would actually make sense to get rid of those debuffs? So, and also, even if your team does it with debuffs, since you would get debuffed on the enemy turn, the enemy will have one turn where you are debuffed, where, for example, if they give you a defense down that lasts for one turn, they're going to give you their defense down, then they're going to attack you, you take increased damage from the defense down, then it's your turn, but the defense down is already ending, so there's no point in cleansing it. So situations happen a lot, so removing debuffs is not that good. So I guess most of the time you will just use this for the defense down, but even the defense down isn't that great. I guess there might be some quests where enemies use debuffs that last for a long time and they keep spamming them on an AoE and in those quests, maybe on some hundred evils, this would be decent, this would be nice on some of those quests. Maybe for some reason you want to take her into mirrors, which you could, and if you're fighting against like a Valentine's Nagisa, sometimes the enemy's Valentine's Nagisa on turn two, not sometimes, but always if you let her survive, will use Meteor Rain on turn two, because she has the skill quicken, then you can just cleanse that off. But even then, just, just play anything else. Just play anything else, okay? Um, but yeah, so her active is not that great. It's not that great. However, now we get to the juicy stuff. We have the Magia. Attack up, damage up. That's just... That's just Mikaki Magia. That's, that's actually just Mikaki Magia. That's actually just exactly Mikaki Magia. So we look at... Here we have Mikaki. Just scroll down. It's attack up and damage up. 40% to all allies for three turns. Cool. I, I actually didn't put it in the right spot. There it is. So it's 40% to all allies for three turns. Okay. That, that's good. Um, however... She's got a bit more than that. She's got more than that. First off, it's an AoE Magia, which oftentimes is better. Not as much anymore, because single target Magia now deal a crap ton of damage, um, but is still pretty good. But it also gives crit to self. It's only 40%. It's only 40%, but it's something. It's something. And since we know that she has decent attack, this actually can make her deal a lot of damage. Mom's about to swat some enemies. 
that's pretty good. But here's where it gets crazy. Here's where it gets absolutely fucking crazy. The Doppel. Keep in mind that, of course, since recently Doppel now is active at 150 MP, so getting to Doppel is now easier. Um, you can't market chain anymore, but at least now you can get to Doppel easier. What does it do? Attack up to all allies, 5 turns 45%. Damage up to all allies, 5 turns 45%. Okay, 5 turns 45%. Look at Mikage. 5 turns 45%. It's the same effect. And Mikage, this is the reason right here why Mikage is broken. And Tsubaki also has that. But not just that. She has flame attribute attack. She has more than that. And on top of that, she has the crit that goes to 100% now. Genoa has 100% crit for three turns. And like I said, she has decent attack. Quite a lot of attack, actually. She's gonna hit pretty hard with this. That's kind of, that's kind of powerful. That's actually... That's, actually, that's the best Doppler in the entire game. This is the best Doppler in the entire game. I'm calling it right now. This is the best Doppler in the entire game. I need, I need to... In order to put it into perspective about this Doppler, okay? Something that I should have done for, for Mikage as well. Um, talking about why she is so good. Okay? So, there were some Kimochi battles where before Mikage was released where a lot of Hyper Whales, like people that basically have every character in the game, that have every memory in the game, some Hyper Whales uh, that they were like in the top 10 damage or top 20 damage, even top 50 damage for uh, the Kimochi, for multiple Kimochis in a row, were using Sayuki. Why? Because she gives 5 turns of 30% attack up. And if you use the two of these in a row, so you would start the battle with like 200 MP, they didn't have a double unlocked, so you would have, you start the battle with 200 MP, you use two of these in a row, you get 60% attack up for the entire battle. Like because the last Kimuchi battle is six turns, you use uh, one on the first turn, one on the second turn, one of those is gonna end before the battle, but still, you're gonna have like about five turns of like 60% attack up. That's why some Hyper Whales played Sayoki for this. Then you have uh, someone, uh, a lot of other whales were playing either Karin or Ao. They were similar, they're similar, right? A lot of whales were playing either Karin or Ao. Here's Ao, for example. Why? Because of damage up. Once again, same thing. You start the battle, uh, you do like damage up uh, on, on the Magia, you use it again, maybe even a third time throughout the battle to keep up that damage up buff, and you do a lot of damage with the damage up. Why? Because you need both attack up and damage up to make sure you do a crap ton of damage. You need both of these effects for the damage. You also need uh, a status aim on the enemy, but there, there are other ways of getting status aim like through Memoria, so it's fine. But those are like the main reason why these two characters were played uh, along with some other characters like Manaka. Hyper Whales are even playing Manaka because she gives attack up on Magia. Like, not even kidding. Top 10 Hyper Whales on the water Kimochi were playing Manaka because she gives attack up on her Magia. Okay? That's how important that is. Hyper Whales, right? That have every character in the game still playing that. And then suddenly came along Mikage, who does both of that. Both of that at the same time. The entire reason for Sayuki's existence, and the entire reason, and the, you know, the entire, but most of the reason for Ao's existence and Karen's existence suddenly smashed into one character. That's why Mikage is so goddamn powerful and why she will, why she will be played on every single Magia team for the rest of eternity unless someone power creeps her. But now, now, by the way, uh, just as a little side note, I mentioned that you also need a stealth aimant on the enemy to maximize TPS. She also does that. There's a burn right here on Mikage. But now, we have another character who also does attack up and damage up all characters for five turns. Fucking absurd. And she gives herself crit and flame attribute attack up. Now, you don't have the status aimant anymore. You don't have the status aimant. Uh, but if you're playing on a fire team, you have the flame attack up. And also keep in mind that uh, the flame attack up stacks additively with the uh, normal attack up and has its own cap. What does that mean? It means you can get 100% attack up, and on top of that, you can get 100% flame attribute attack up at most, which is a total of 200% attack up in total, which you can't do if you don't have the flame attribute attack up, otherwise you just have the regular attack up 200%. So you can break the attack up cap with this, um, but only if, if you're fire type. So if you're playing on a fire maga team, which you could, for example, put her on there with Susune, Maybe Ryoko, for example, maybe Shizuka, for example, uh, some of those characters. If Rika ever gets an uncap and you're free to play, then maybe that would be a good character to put on there as well. It's like any Magia team for a uh, fire type, 
maybe Judy. I'm not quite sure about that because she maybe has a bit too many blasters, but maybe Judy as well. On those teams, she would be absolutely absurd as a support. And she can hit herself pretty hard as well with the critical hit percent chance. That's pretty good. Now, I do need to keep keep up the comparison to Mikage because not a lot of other people have also prepared her to, to Mikage after I did. And one thing to note is if you're not if you're not playing on a fire team, Mikage is just always better. Why? Why is Mikage always better if you're not playing a fire team? Well, first off, she has an extra excel. This means she can get excel combos herself and just shoot her way up to double immediately. Secondly, you, you have this. This is a four turn excel draw, and that's kind of fucking broken. That is actually kind of fucking broken. So um, this right here is one of the reasons why Mika gets probably better um, on any team that isn't full fire. But if you're playing a full fire team, Smoky is godlike. So yeah, we have now one of the other best supports in the game alongside Mikage. Specifically the best support for fire teams as well. So if you've got a fire team, pick her up, pick it up. Uh, also one thing to note is... Um, uh, I guess you can play on a blast team as well if you go build her full attack uh, and then tr use those crits. So I guess you could play her on a crit, uh, like on a, on a blast team as well because she still has decent attack. I guess also something to keep in mind. So th that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now one thing I need to mention as well is that they're they're memoria. Whoops, they're memoria on this on this gacha as well. Are they good? Are they good? Well, we have this, which is all right. I think this is already in the news as well. You would use this probably towards the beginning of a battle when you are when the character who has his memoria is getting some Excel discs, and you would just pump Excel discs into that character to get them to Magi or Doppel, maybe Tsubaki herself. And then at the end of that, hopefully when you still have while you still have the buff active, you'd use a Magia to make use of the Magia damage up. For that, this is pretty good. It's a pretty good memoria. Nothing groundbreaking, but pretty good. Uh, moving on, we have this, no turning back. Chance to bind, whatever, it's, who cares, it's not that great. But yeah, she's, she's very good, she's very good. Uh, yeah, what, what, what I did want to mention is, if you only have enough resources to get her one slot, or you've rolled all your rolls and you've only gotten her one slot, that's fine, you can keep her at one slot, because what you really care about is the doppel. That said, if you have the rolls, you probably do want to get multiple slots of her, because multiple slots means you can have multiple memoria that give Excel MP gain up, or MP gain up, or something like Meteor Rain that helps your entire team, stuff like that. Um, so of course you still want to have more uh, memoria to make her more powerful, um, but if you just want to worry about the double itself, you can just keep her at one slot. If you're playing on a fire team, maybe put the uh, person on her, and you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be fine. So yeah, that was that, hope you guys hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, oh, got the regular stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. And we do call your mom, she's getting really sad.